What is bioenergetic analysis? 那我今天的一个主题呢，就是到底身体能量分析是什么呢 ？And I hope to give you a both a general idea. 那我希望可以给大家一个一个概括的介绍。And also some specific examples. 同时也给你们举一些具体的例子。And I encourage you. While I'm talking about this, to do what we do in bioenergetic analysis. 那我鼓励你们呢，就是在你听的时候呢，也可以像我们一样做。To pay close attention to your sensations. 那就是什么呢？就是包括去注意你自己的一些感受。To treat everything that happens as Part of the experience. 还有身体的感觉，然后就把你身体所有的发生当做你体验的一部分。And then after I'm done speaking, 然后我讲完之后呢 ？If you have some comments or questions in the time that we have, I'll be very interested to hear them. 在我们剩下来的时间，我会很感兴趣听到大家的一些分享或者问题。Let's begin at the beginning. 那我们从一开始来谈吧。Bioenergetic analysis is an approach to psychotherapy. 那身体能量分析呢，是一种心理治疗的取向。Psychotherapy is an approach to healing and reducing human suffering. 而心理治疗治疗呢，它是一种疗愈的取向，它的目标呢，也是为了减减轻人类的痛苦。It is an approach that attempts to do that through a process of getting to know oneself deeply. 那这种取向的一个运作的原理呢，就是它是可以让我们去呃更深入的了解自己。Let me say that again to you. 那这个我再说一次啊。Because it is at the center. Of this discipline and practice, because I just said this point, actually, is that we are practicing this discipline or this movement is very important. Each of us who practices this discipline is practicing this discipline. Each of us who practices in this way is attempting to face ourselves. We are attempting to face ourselves. We are attempting to face ourselves. We are attempting to face ourselves. To reduce the suffering that we carry, 来减少我们的痛苦 Through the process of knowing ourselves deeply, 那这个就是透过深入的了解自己来做到的 And those of you to whom I am speaking who have also attempted this. 那就是在座在聆听的各位，有一些人呢也有做过这样的尝试。You know how difficult this is. 那你们也已经很了解这个里面包含的一些困难了。You know how difficult and how challenging it is to see oneself clearly and express oneself openly. 那你们也知道要去清晰的了解自己，然后去敞开的表达自己是很困难也很有挑战的。If we could all do that easily， 如果我们都可以很简单就做到的话 ，If we could all be truthful with ourselves and the people we care about。如果我们都可以对自己，还有我们关心的、爱的人，可以如此真实的话 ，and express ourselves openly， 并且可以敞开的去表达自己 ，we would live in a very different world than the world we live in。我们今天生活在的这个世界就会非常不一样了。There are many forces that make this Project of facing ourselves and expressing ourselves very difficult. So, there are many factors that make this process of facing ourselves and expressing ourselves very difficult. So, there are many factors that make this process of facing ourselves and expressing ourselves very difficult. So, there are many factors that make this process of facing ourselves and expressing ourselves very difficult. So, there are many factors that make this process of facing ourselves and expressing ourselves very difficult. So, there are many factors that make this process of facing ourselves and expressing ourselves very difficult. So, there are many factors that make this process of facing ourselves and expressing ourselves very difficult. So, there are many factors that make this process of facing ourselves and expressing ourselves very difficult. So, there are many factors that make this process of facing 
。那可以这样做到的能力呢，其实是需要花一辈子去发展的。It is this work that bioenergetic therapists do in our own particular way. 那呃， uh, 也正是这样的工作，就是我们每一个身体能量分析师会去用我们独特的方式去做的。In bioenergetic analysis, the work of discovering oneself and expressing oneself can take many forms. 在身体能量分析里面呢，呃，发现自己和表达自己的这个过程是可以用很多不同的形式来表达的。Certainly, the words that each of us speaks, when spoken with meaning. Can show us ourselves and express who we are. 那当然了，我们平常讲的话，我们的语言是可以表达一些内容，也可以表达我们是谁的，因为他们是有意义的。But also the way we move. 但但是同时，我们动的方式。The sounds that we make. 我们发声的方式。The way that our energy is held and expressed in our bodies and behavior. 还有我们能量在我们身体里面保持的状态，还有在我们行为里面表达的方式，都是可以呃、uh, 告诉别人我们是谁的。Bioenergetic analysis makes use of all of that information. 那身体能量分析呢，会用我们刚才说的所有的信息去把它运用起来。And just like in any other discipline of understanding， 那就像跟其他所有的理解人的啊、uh, 一些流派一样的。We can begin our understanding with very surface expressions. 我们都可以从一些比较表面的表达去开始了解一个人。But we want to be able to understand those surface expressions in very complex ways. 但是，即使是一些表面的表达，我们也可以用很复杂的方式去理解它的。If you think about the Earth we all live on, 如果你想象就是我们住的这个地球啊。If we look at the surface. We see very dramatic things. 如果你只是看我们地球的表面，你已经可以看到很多非常有趣的东西。We see mountains and rivers and seas. 我们看到很多的对比啊，你看到有山、有水、有河、有大海。And we react to those things in all kinds of ways. 然后我们对这些不同的东西呢，也会有很多不一样的反应。We know from our ability to study below the surface that these are manifestations of very powerful forces at work. 那从我们对于地球内核的了解，呃，可以看到呢，其实我们所有表面的这些现象啊，都是内在力量的一种表达。So the river runs where it runs after millions of years of water flowing in a particular way. 就比如说啊，河流在那么久以来，那么多年以来，它都是用某一个方式朝某一个方向在走的。Similarly, in psychotherapy. 那在心理治疗里面也是差不多的。Many years ago, in a Uh, bioenergetic therapy with a therapist who uh, helped me tremendously. I asked the question. 那很多年之前呢，就是呃，在我跟一个身体能量分析师在一起的时候呢，我就问了他一个问题。那这个分析师给了我的帮助是很大的。I was in some despair about the possibility of changing myself and my life. 那个时候，我对于我自己能否改变，或者我的生活能否改变，是感觉到很绝望的。Many many times I had expressed my pain and my rage and my suffering. 然后有很多次呢，我都在表达我的痛苦、我的暴怒、我的呃我的苦难。
And I, I said something that many of you, if you are yourselves psychotherapy patients or you are therapists, I said something that you have probably felt or heard also. 那我我那个时候讲的那个话呢，我觉得如果你们自己曾经去做过心理治疗，或者你们自己是治疗师，你应该也会听过的，也会熟悉的。I said, how many times do I have to do this before something changes? 我那个时候就跟我的治疗师讲说,到底我要再这样子持续下去多少次,我才可以看到一些改变呢? And my therapist said, you know how infants learn? 然后我的治疗师跟我讲说,哎,Scott,你知道小宝宝他们是如何学习的吗? They learn through infinite repetitions. 婴儿都是透过无限的重复来学习的. Like how the river forms its course. 就像河流它之所以会产生一个河道也是同样的原理. So the people who come to us for help, they come formed like the river. 所以其实到我们这边来求助的一些人，他们也像河流一样的，他们有今天的形态，也是因为他们有很多的重复。And our task as bioenergetic therapists or psychotherapists is to receive that flow first. 那所以我们作为身体能量分析师或者作为心理治疗师，我们的任务呢，就是先去接收这一些河流的流动。In bioenergetic analysis, we add to the information we have. By, sorry, sorry, please go on. By by observing the person in their form and movement as well as in their expression of psychological and emotional processes. 所以在身体能量分析里面呢,我们除了一些语言上的信息,我们还会添加一些关于他们身体形态上啊,他们动作上,他们声音上,还有他们的内在心理活动,还有外在身体表达的这些信息来总体的去分析。then what is the purpose of doing that? The question of how psychotherapy offers a healing process is a very deep and complex question. I, I am very interested in that question, and I just published a quite a long paper on the subject myself. There is no simple or easy answer to that question. 因为对于这个问题呢，我们很难用一个很简单或很直接的方式去回答。One thing that almost all psychotherapy systems share in common. 那其实无无论你是任何的呃那个心理治疗流派，其实我们都是有一个共通点的。Is a belief in the healing effect of combining emotion and emotional expression with awareness. 就是我们每一个流派都相信,只要我们是可以带着觉察去看我们的感受,并且去表达我们的感受,就会有效果。It's important here for me to say about the philosophy of bioenergetic analysis something. 那在这里呢,我就觉得我必须要先讲一下到底身体能量分析的核心哲学是什么。In our understanding of emotion, emotion is a very sophisticated system for understanding reality. 在我们的信念里面呢,我们相信感受是一个非常精细的 呃, 是一个很精密的系统 它可以帮助我们理解现实 
Emotion is not a primitive child part of life. 感受呢，并不是生活中一种原始，或者是啊呃，很像小孩子、很幼稚的一个东西。Along with our cognitive abilities, emotion provides us with deep and refined information about ourselves. 那除了我们的认知能力以外呢，其实我们的情感能力也是可以给到我们非常精细的，也是非常深入的关于自己的信息。It provides us information about others, other people, and what is happening around us. 它同时也可以帮助呃我们了解他人，还有我们周遭发生的一些事情。But it takes practice and skill. 但是这一切呢，都是需要练习、实践，还有技术的。In a healthy life and in a healthy family, children are encouraged to develop that skill. 在呃， uh, 就如果你的生活是健康的，如果你的家庭是健康的话，那一般在这样家庭里面的孩子呢，都会被鼓励去呃、uh, 发展这样的能力。We want our children to use. Their emotional intelligence to understand themselves, to understand us, and to understand what's happening in reality around them. Because we actually hope to help children to develop their emotions, so that they can better understand themselves, understand us, and understand what's happening in reality. When we observe reality around us, we see that that process is very difficult. 但是当我们看我们去观察我们的现实世界的时候，我们会看到这样子一种呃，就是表达和理解自己的呃这种这种过程是很困难的。The question of why it is so difficult is too big to take up in this talk. 那至于为什么那么困难呢？我觉得这个问题对于我们啊、uh, 有限的时间来说太大了。But I think that all of us here today can agree that the development of a full emotional and body-based life is very difficult in the societies that we live in. 但是我想，我们都可以同意，就是说，在我们居住的这种社会里面，要去发展出一个完整的、呃，全身心的一个、呃，一个身体或者一个心理生活是非常难的。Here today we are talking a little bit about what we can do about that, and not very much about how it happens this way. 那今天我们在这里主要会讲说关于这样的问题，我们有什么样的一些啊、呃、解决方案，但是我们可能不太会去解释为什么这个难题会存在。How we got to be this way? These are very important questions for us as a species, and when we train in bioenergetic analysis, we take up those questions very seriously. 就是我们怎么会变得像现在这样子呢？那这种问题，呃，其实是跟我们人类作为一个物种来说是有关系的，跟我们人类的发展历史也有关系。那这个可能今天就不会去谈了。但是在我们身体能量分析的培训课程里面，我们都是非常认真的去看待并且讨论这个问题的。But for now, let's talk more practically and clinically. 但是现在呢，我想聚焦在就是实际操作还有临床的呃一个一个问题上面，就怎么样做呢 ？Those of us who、uh, work day in and day out with patients， 我们啊， uh, 如果你是治疗师的话，你可能每天都会见到很多不同的案主。We observe how awareness, self-awareness. And expression are blocked by defenses. 那我们都会发现呢，我们都会看到说，呃，每个人都有很多的防御啊，然后这些防御呢，会阻碍我们
These defenses block awareness, knowledge. And they block the emotional experience that would come with that knowledge. These defenses are part of our evolutionary equipment to cope with life. 然后这些防御呢，其实都是我们人在进化历程呃呃上面发展出来的一些求生存的方式。They uh, uh, are a necessary part of our survival system. 他们都是我们求生存系统里面很有必要的一个部分。And when they are used in that way, they can be used. And then dissolved. 然后当他们是这样子啊被使用的时候呢，也就代表他们也是可以被被化解的。And again, why that is not the way it happens is not really for our talk right now. 那为什么现在我们都做不到这样子呢？我觉得在我们今天的时间里面，可能呃没有机会去详细探讨了。what we observe in ourselves and also clinically. Is that the defenses against knowing and feeling become rigidified and habitual. 我们发现呢，就是我们对于呃了解自己和感受、体验自己的一些防御，它会随着时间被固化，然后会成为一种习惯。They shield us from the pain and emotion of the difficult experiences in our lives, which we could not cope with at the time they happen. 这些防御呢，是呃帮助我们去呃去保护我们，让我们不会体验到在那个事情发生的当下的一些痛苦、一些困难，还有一些体验。There are many ways in life to come into contact with that knowledge and emotional experience. 那在生活里面呢，有很多的方式可以帮助我们去跟那个事件产生的一些影响或者呃一些体验去连接上的。One of the uh, one of the things that happens in healthy relationships is that a person begins to see herself or himself through the eyes of another. 比如说，在一个在一段健康的关系里面，嗯，你会发现会开始有一些不同的机会去帮助你透过另外一个人的眼睛看到你的自我。This is not always an easy experience. 那当然了，就是当你的另外一半或者呃另外一个关系中的对象这样子来向你反射你是谁的时候，呃，并不是每一次都那么轻松愉悦的。I'll tell you a story about myself to illustrate what I mean. Many years ago, when I was in my role as the president of the IIBA, I gave a welcoming remarks at a conference in Brazil. And Brazil is like China. They photograph everything. They take videos of everything. This was a new thing for me. 
这个对我来说是一个很崭新的体验 So they videoed my introductory remarks 所以我那个时候的开幕致辞呢 他们也拍下来了 And then at the party At the end of the conference 然后在大会结束的时候 我们都会有一个派对 While the music was playing And I went to dance 然后呢他们就放音乐然后我就跑去跳舞了 there I was on these big screens. And I noticed that I was making this expression with my mouth all the time that I was speaking. And I I turned to my late wife, who was also a very, she was a very skilled bioenergetic therapist. 然后我就转向我那个，就是现在已经去世的妻子啊。那但是当时呢，她也是一个非常非常呃资深的身体能量分析师。And I said, did I do that through the whole time I was speaking? 然后我就问她说，天哪，亲爱的，我刚才一直在演讲的时候，难道我的表情一直是那个样子的吗？ And she said, yes, you did. 然后他就说,对啊,就是这样子 So, some of that is about learning how to do a performance 所以呢,当然呢,那个跟我的那个演讲能力也是有关系的 I have, I, I live in New York City and I practice in New York City I have had many patients who are actors 那我住在纽约,纽约,然后我也是在纽约工作的,然后我很多的案主呢,都是演员。And I have learned a great deal about the process by which someone trains to be in front of a camera. 然后从他们身上呢,我也慢慢学到,就是我们怎么可以去训练自己,让自己可以在镜头前面更好的表达。And I have learned from my experience and from teachers how to be better at communicating in that method. 然后我也是从我自己的经验，还有从我的老师们身上学到怎么可以更好的用这样的方式来表达自己和去跟别人沟通。I'm also a bioenergetic therapist. 然后呢，我也是身体能量分析师。and I know that that expression I was making has its own particular meaning. So I As I observe myself, I know that I am struggling with my own pain and anxiety. 然后当我去在屏幕上面观察自己的时候，我就发现其实我那个表情，呃，我之所以有那个表情，是因为我是在尝试处理我的焦虑，然后我也是在跟我的痛苦在挣扎的。And I know that I am struggling with a profound conflict in me. 然后我透过那个表情就知道，其实我内在有一个非常深的冲突。I have uh, a a wish to be out there and to be expressing myself. Look at me. 这个冲突呢，就是一方面我有很强烈的愿望，希望可以把我自己就是放在那儿，然后可以去表达自己，让全世界看到我。I also have many conflicted feelings about doing that. 但是同时呢，另外一方面，我对这样的一种表达呢，是有很多很复杂的感受的。I am embarrassed by my own ambition to be a showman. 这些感受呢，有一些是彼此矛盾的。就比如说，一方面我觉得，呃，我自己有这种就是呈现、展现自己的欲望，是让我觉得很害羞、很羞耻的。and I have experiences of humiliation when I reveal myself. I can use this experience of my life of seeing myself this way. 
然后我可以去用这个对自己的看见。Because I am an experienced psychotherapy patient, because I am an experienced psychotherapy patient. I have done the work to make it possible to receive this information and use it without being overwhelmed by it. Then, because I have done the work to make it possible to receive this information and use it without being overwhelmed by it. Then, because I have done the work to make it possible to receive 接纳我看到的这个信息，然后也不会感觉好像我要被它淹没的样子。I can use it without blocking the experience with defenses. 然后我也可以就不带着任何的防御的去看到这个信息，并且就使用它。For me, and I think I I am willing to say for most people. 然后对我来。Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's my fault. 嗯，所以对我来说，然后我觉得对很多人来说呢 ，to be able to do that, to take past experience and present experience and feel it in an alive way, requires the work of psychotherapy. 那对我来说，还有对很多人来说呢，要这样子去。呃、uh, ，用一个鲜活的方式去把过去的体验带到现在，并且从从它里面学习，呃、uh, ，这样的一个功课呢，真的是需要心理治疗来帮助我们完成的。Many of you listening to me are probably familiar with elements of psychotherapy and how it works. 那呃， uh, 在座的各位，他你们应该已经对心理治疗的很多一些元素已经呃、uh, 很熟悉了，你们也知道它是怎么样运作的。Bioenergetic analysis offers more ways to do that work. 那身体能量分析呢，其实是可以为这样的心理治疗工作带来更多的可能性，更多的方法。In bioenergetic analysis, we can work directly. With breathing, movement, and expression of feeling. 那在身体能量分析里面呢，我们是可以直接去跟呼吸、动作还有感受的表达去工作的。I I have been teaching now, uh, in China for, oh, I think now it's eight years. 我在中国做培训已经做了八年了。And certainly, my understanding of Chinese culture is very limited. 然后，当然了，我对中国文化的了解是非常有限的。But there are many places, um, many experiences that tell me that there are elements of your culture and mine that are very similar. 但是，呃，我在这里的经验告诉我呢，其实我的文化和你们的文化之间是有很多共通点的。And one of those places of similarity that's very important for our work as psychotherapists. 那其中一个共通点呢，就是 ，is that expressing strongly felt emotion. I'm sorry, and expressing it in a strong way. 嗯，这个共通点呢，就是我们都需要用一个强烈的方式去表达强烈的情绪。Is not encouraged except under very strict rules. 但是呢，这样的表达呢，其实在我们的文化里面都不太被接纳。呃、uh, ，除非你是在一个就是有一些非常清晰的框架的呃、uh, 设定的情境下才可以这样做。We do not teach ourselves and our children how to use emotion, how to expand it, and how to follow its subtlety. 我们自己没有学过，然后也没有教过我们的孩子怎么样去了解我们的情绪。表达我们的情绪，并且去跟随它很多很微妙的流动。So, for example, in our work, often people find inside themselves a scream. 
就比如说，在我们的工作里面，我们会发现很多人的内心都好像有一个屏幕一样的。The scream is a deeply human expression. 那这个呃、uh, ，sorry, you mean scream or screen? Scream. Ah! 啊啊，不好意思，不是屏幕，是尖叫。他说我们很多人的内心都会有一个呃很强的呐喊，是有我们很深的一种渴望的表达。It can even be humorous, just like just now between Hedy and me. 有时候呢，甚至是呃很幽默的，就像我刚才表达的那种呐喊一样。The, the scream a person has inside them has unique meaning in that moment. 我们内在的任何当下的这种呐喊呢，都是有一些独特的意义的。A person can. Scream in terror. A person. 你的呐喊可能是因为你极度的恐慌。A person can scream in grief. 有可能是因为你在哀伤当中。A person can scream in delight. 或者是因为你非常的喜悦。Each of these expressions is a unique, energetic, emotional, and psychological process. 每一种这样的体验，其实都是一个独特的情感上的、能量上的，还有心理上的历程。And in your culture and mine, we are not encouraged to learn about the subtlety of that experience. 那在你们的文化，还有在我的文化里面呢，我们都都没有人鼓励我们去呃去了解这些里面很多很微妙的东西。But it is not correct to simply say, "Well, people are just blocked from expression." 但是呢，我们也不能说啊，那人其实就是表达不了感受，是吗 ？To to、uh, understand that, you only have to go to watch a football game. 就比如说啊，就为什么我们不能说人类不能表达情绪呢？因为比如说你去看一个球赛的话 ，And there, there are. Fifty thousand, a hundred thousand people screaming. You 就知道了。你看球赛就会看到有成千上万的人在那边尖叫。Sometimes in excitement, and sometimes. 有时候我们是带着兴奋的，有时候是带着失望。But it is unintegrated screaming. 但是这种呃呐喊呢，我们说它是没有被整合的呐喊。They are not using the experience to understand themselves. 那没有被整合的意思呢？就是这个人或者这些人没有用这个体验，没有利用这个体验去了解自己。It is for many people still an unconscious process. 那也就意味着这种呐喊对很多人来说，其实还是一种无意识的历程。But making it a conscious process. Is difficult. 但是如果要把这种表达变成有意识的话呢，那是很困难的。Developing a way of living in which I stay awake and conscious during strong emotional experience takes a great deal of practice. 如果我是想把自己修炼成，就是当我每一次有感受的时候，我都是可以全然的跟他在一起，并且很鲜活的去彻底的体验它，这个是需要很多的练习的。I'll give you an example from my own life, from some, from another area in life of what I'm talking about. 那我想从自己的生活里面再给大家举另外一个例子。I I have trained as a boxer for many years. 就是曾经有很多年呢，我都在做拳击的训练。I don't. I have not been many times in in the actual boxing ring, but I have enough experience with it to know some things about myself. 那当然，我并没有花很多的时间在呃，在那个擂台和擂台上面，在那边打拳呢。但是，我是也有足够对于拳击是有足够的体验的。And one problem that I have is to keep my eyes open. 
。那我发现我其中一个就是在做啊、呃，在打拳的时候有一个很大的困难呢，就是我是很难经常保持双眼睁开的。This is a basic element of all martial arts. 那但是。张开眼呢、啊，就是保持双眼张开，对于所有的武术来说都是很重要的一个一个基础。The discipline is to stay awake and alert even while you are under attack. 那这种修炼是什么呢？就是即使你感觉到自己快要被攻击了，但是还是保持双眼张开，还是非常警觉的，还是。呃，整个人是醒着的，这个就是我们的修炼。It is not not to feel. You have to feel to know what's happening. 所以在武术里面或者打拳里面，你是不可以啊、呃，就是把自己的感受屏蔽掉的，因为你必须要呃看到自己有什么感受，你才可以知道当下在发生什么。But you have to be able to live. And breathe, and blink your eyes, and stay in the experience. So, when this experience happens, ah, we also need to be able to breathe, to open our eyes, to see the world, and to live this experience. And I know that this experience has of mine, my experience, and I know that this experience has of mine, my experience has many parts. And I know that this experience has of mine, my experience has many parts. And I know that this experience has of mine, my experience has many parts. One part is comes from my very early childhood and the terror that I lived with. 那呃， uh, 我不能睁开眼睛呢。其其中一个原因呢，就是因为我的童年，我我的童年遭遇过一些恐怖，然后是让我害怕睁开眼睛的。But my my boxing teacher tells me that it's also a common experience. 但是我的拳击导师告诉我呢，其实，呃，不能张开眼也是很多人的共同体验。She herself is a very accomplished boxer. 她自己呢，就是我的这位女性导师呢，她自己也是非常有成就的，很资深的一个拳击手。Who also teaches yoga as part of our work. So, 然后她也是一个瑜伽老师。So we use whatever we can to develop the skill. 所以我们也也也像他一样，我们也可以运用自己有的资源和能力去发展自己的一套风格。Developing the capacity to be present with oneself and strong emotion is a challenging process. 要去呃， uh, 就是发展出这种可以随时自我觉察、随时可以活在当下体验里面的这个能力是很难的。So in the beginning of therapy, this way of being is a new experience for most of us. So, when we first start therapy, this way of being is a new experience for most of us. So, when we first start therapy, this way of being is a new experience for most of us. So, when we first start therapy, this way of being is a new experience for most of us. So, when we first start therapy, this way of being is a new experience for most of us. So, when we first start therapy, this way of being is a new experience for most of us. So, when we first start therapy, this way of being is a new experience for most of us. So, when we first start therapy, this way of being is a new experience for most of us. So, when we first start therapy, this way of being is a new experience for most of us. So, when we first start therapy, this way of being is a new experience for most of us. So, when we first start therapy, this way of being is a new experience for most of us. So, when we first start therapy, this way of being is a new And part of the educational element is inviting the person to enter this way of being. 那其中一个教育的元素呢，就是我们在治疗里面需要去邀请案主慢慢的进入这种内在的呃，了解自己的这个状态。For me, it's a very important and essential part of bioenergetic analysis. 那对我来说呢，这个教育元素呢，也是身体能量分析很重要的、很核心的一个部分。I believe, and and the colleagues of mine whose work I respect believe that the constructive experience and expression of strong emotion is a way to become more mature, more self-possessed. And more alive. 我还有就是所有我尊敬的一些同事，我们都相信呢，这种啊有带有建设性的情绪的表达，还有发现，还有体验，是可以帮助我们变得更加的成熟，更加的稳定，有自信，还有更有活力的。
Using this method takes training and practice in addition to the basic training in psychotherapy. 那所以，如果要做到身体能量分析这种，呃，就是要取得这些技能的话，是需要呃很多的练习，还有培训的。就是除了你平常做的心理治疗培训，还需要在身体能量分析里面，就是深入的培训。Working directly with body process, with sensation, perception, and expression, is a new discipline. 因为你要去直接的去跟呃身体、身体很多的运作，还有呃身体的感受，还有所有的观点去工作的话，是需要很多的呃修炼的。These are skills that have to be learned in addition to the necessary skills of interpersonal psychotherapy. 这些呃，这些技能呢，都是呃，跟其他的心理治疗流派不太一样的，就是可能除了平常你学的一些人际的心理治疗内容之外，你还需要就是额外去学习这样的一些技能。So in our training programs around the world and in China as well. 所以在我们全球还有在中国的培训课程里面呢。We make sure. To provide the time and education to enable practitioners to use this discipline. In these training programs, we will ensure that each person has enough time and enough training to ensure that everyone can completely learn this discipline. Uh, that that's the end of what I want to say to you because I want to leave some time, and I see a note here from Rebecca that we have some questions. The first question is, um, what is the significance and function of the body in bioenergetic analysis? Mm -hmm. Uh, and also in the process of therapy, how could the body change? Like, what kind of changes would actually emerge from this kind of therapy? Like, is it the form, the posture of the body, the uh, working of the organs, the nervous system? Mm -hmm. Very good. Got it. So that's the first question. The second question is. What's the relationship between bioenergetic analysis and the expression of Emotions, or in other words, how to turn our emotions into positive energies to help us improve our lives. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm I'm writing as you're talking. Okay. Do you um, want do you want to give them all to me, or should we do them one at a time? Uh, it's up to you. Let's do them one at a time. Okay. How? Because I don't know how long. We'll take. So let's do them one at a time. Let's do the first one. Okay. 那我们就先一个一个问题的来看吧，因为不知道每个问题会花多少时间回答。那我们先来回答第一个问题啊，就是身体能量分析在呃心理治疗中的意义和功能。Okay. Uh, shall I start? Are we ready? 大家都准备好了吗？可以开始了。回答问题。嗯。Okay. Yes. Um, this is this first question is right to the heart of this discipline, and it is the most difficult question to answer um, intellectually without an experiential part. 就是呃，大家看一下群里面的这个第一个问题啊，就是身体。在身体能量分析里面的意义和功能是什么？这个问题呢，其实呃是很重要的问题，然后也是直接呃到达我们这个身体能量分析的最核心的部分了。但是呢，如果要就用纯认知的方式来回答这个问题，其实是非常困难的，因为一般都是用体验型的方式去了解的。Because the most difficult part of this discipline. Is to stop making a difference between mind and body. 
因为其实，在我们这种啊修炼里面。最呃最难的也最重要的一个部分，就是要先去把这个大脑和身体的这个二元性把把它去除。And I I start to feel my frustration and difficulty at communicating this discipline at the level of language. 然后在这个当下，其实我已经开始感觉到有一些。呃，有一些的挫败感呢，因为呃，要我只是用语言去表达我们这个呃这个流派到底是做什么，真的是非常困难的。Language is a tremendously valuable human capacity. 那语言呢，是一种非常宝贵的人类特有的能力。And often people become confused. Uh, by the idea that it's only words or it's in the head. Yeah. 那但是我们很多时候对于说啊，这个语言都只是在头脑里面呐、啊，或者语言就只是一些文字游戏啊，我们对于这种概念很很模糊。The important thing to understand is that it's all language and. Sensation and emotion—it's all about meaning. It's all about meaning. So, uh, is, uh, although we often say, ah, language is only in the head, but I think it's very important for all of us to understand that, regardless of language or the body's feelings or emotions, all of these are important. They are important. And meaning. Meaning has endless depth and significance. 而意义呢是有无尽的深度和重要性的。And we can approach meaning through language, through sensation, through contact with another person. These are all ways to enter meaning. 所以，如果我们要进入我们核心的意义呢，我们可以透过语言，可以透过身体的感受，可以透过跟跟别人的接触，透过自己的情绪，这些不同的入口都可以让我们呃进入这个核心的意义。So let me now answer the second part of the question while continuing to answer the first part. 那现在让我来回答第一个问题的第二个部分吧。我觉得当我讲第二部分的时候呢，第一个部分的答案也会更清晰。The person I know the most about is myself. 那我最了解的一个人呢，就是我自己了。So I will use myself as an example. 所以我就讲讲自己的一个体验吧。Uh, many years ago, I I went. Uh, to a gym for to to begin to work out, and I had an evaluation by a trainer at the gym. 那很多年前呢，我加入了一个健身房，然后呃，在那边就是有教练去在评估我身体的状态。And he noticed he was very perceptive, and he noticed the difference between the two sides of my body. 然后他是很敏锐的，他就说啊，你身体的左右两边好像啊、uh, 区别蛮大的。Which was quite dramatic. 这个他说这个区别呃是挺大的，就是跟平常不太一样了。And he wondered if perhaps I did a kind of work that I used one side of the body much more than the other. 然后，所以他就问我说：“你是不是以前做过一些工作，是让你经常就只是用身体的一边，然后另外一边不怎么用的 ？”But I knew that that was not the reason for the difference. 但是我自己知道啊，其实我的工作并不是真正的原因。Very early in my psychotherapy, as a patient, I had an experience of the difference between the two sides of my body. 在很久很久之前呢，当我刚开始作为案主接受心理治疗的时候，我就已经发现我身体的两边是很不一样的。And as I continued to work in psychotherapy, as I continue today as a patient in psychotherapy. 
，然后在我就是继续做治疗的过程里面，就是作为案主啊，我在我在我到今天还在做治疗呢。I could feel uh, the engorgement, the enlargement of the muscles on the right side of my neck. 我到现在还能够感觉到，就是我右边啊，就脖子右边的肌肉啊，是比左边大很多的。Like a column of muscle up the side, right side, but not on the left side. 我会感觉到自己脖子的右边好像有一个很粗的肌肉柱子一样的，就是这边有，但是左边是没有的。In the beginning of my therapeutic process, that Engorgement, that enlargement of muscle, was connected to rage. 那我一开始接受治疗的时候呢，我就发现原来这个肌肉群啊是跟我的暴怒有关系的。And I have spent years screaming in rage. 然后呢，所以我就花了好多年的时间去。呃、uh, ，去带着我的暴怒去尖叫，来表达这个肌肉的这个东西。Because those feelings, those situations were very, very early in my life, and the patterns are very deep and old. 因为呃， uh, 早期这些让我感觉到暴怒的这些情境呢，其实是很久很久之前的事情了。呃、uh, ，但是因为他们的这些。呃，但是这些模式呢，已经形成在我身体里面了，所以他们是很老的模式。But then I've learned more in these last perhaps ten years of my work. 所以在过去的十年呃里面呢，我对这个部分有更多的了解了，可能比以前更多。I've learned. That there is a demonic force, a destructive force that lives inside me. 我学习到呢，原来在我的内在有一个非常有摧毁性的，甚至有点像恶魔一样的一个力量，一直的在我的内在。Or I've learned more about that. That would be more correct. I've learned more about that. 啊，或者说呢，其实我最近对于这股力量有更多的了解了。And I've learned that I sense the activation of that in my neck. Ah, 然后我也学习到呢，啊，我是透过我的脖子去感受到这股力量的启动的。And I have understood that as a reaction to what was done to me and what happened to me. 然后我也理解呢，我身体的这个症状其实是对于我早期的那个情境的一种一种回应。I've also understood it as an expression of an infant's need to destroy everything because of what's happening to him. 然后我也理解到呢，其实我脖子的这块肌肉也是在呃，它在表达的是一个婴儿对于呃对于情境的一种毁灭性的回应，因为那个遭遇让我以前的这个小婴儿非常想去毁灭世界上所有的一切。And I've also understood it as a way to return psychological and emotional organization when I am threatened with disorganization from my fear of the attack. 那我也理解到呢，其实，呃，我的这个身体回应是在帮助我，在一个完全没有任何组织、没有任何秩序的环境里面，去找到一些身体还有内在的一种秩序。因为那个时候遭遇到攻击，然后我是在那个情况下帮自己找到一些稳定。All of these different Organizations, all of these different elements, are all connected to the muscular organization in my neck. 那所有这种就是呃，我在心里面给自己的一种呃一种这种这种稳定感呢，这种秩序内在秩序呢，都是跟我的脖子上面这块肌肉有关系的，是透过它在表达的。And just the other day, I guess in preparation for this question. I noticed that all of that engorgement is gone. My neck is flat. 
。然后呢，就是其实就是前几天啊，可能我也在无意识的为你们问的这个问题在做准备。就是前几天，我突然发现我右边的这块肌肉不见了。If you were touching my neck, you would hardly notice a difference between the left side and the right side. 就如果你现在去摸我脖子的话，你会发现我的左右两边的肌肉群的呃那个是挺对称的，没有以前那种一边肿大的情况。When I touch it, I can feel the difference. There's still a difference. 当我自己摸的时候，当然我还是可以摸到有一点点的区别啊。But more importantly, I can feel what is being activated in my being when I touch each side. 但是更重要的就是，我现在可以清晰的感觉到，每次当我碰到身体的左边或者右边的时候，什么样的情绪会被启动，什么样的体验会被启动。This is a change in my whole being that I cannot even begin to describe. To you, how important it is to me. That this change is my whole being's change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I don't know how to begin to describe this change. Then I 嗯，然后呃呃，而这个改变呢，就是跟我刚才讲的所有的这些身体的功能都是有关系的。It is connected to my ability to mobilize my rage to defend myself. 一方面呢，是跟我呃，我可以去开始启动去运用自己呃，自己保护自己的这个资源有关系的。It is connected to facing my own destructiveness. And my own urges to do harm. 然后我的疗愈呢，也是因为我可以终于可以直面我自己的毁灭性，然后我那种想去伤害的、伤害其他东西的这种欲望。And it is connected to an understanding of myself and my ability to organize myself in the moment of terror. And disorganization by becoming enraged. 然后，呃，我的疗愈也是来自于，当我每次有暴怒的体验的时候，我都可以重新组织自己。就是即使可能外在是没有组织的一个情境，我也可以去透过身体去把自己重新组织起来。I hope that answers your question. How to turn emotions into positive energies、mm -hmm. to help us improve our lives?、Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay.、Um, there's a premise in that question that we need to bring out into the open. 那其实在，在呃，在回应第二个问题之前呢，我我想先呃讲一下这个问题里面的其中一个假设啊、哦，我觉得我们很需要把这个假设呈现出来。Uh, which is that emotion is in some way a negative energy. 这个假设呢，就是好像我们都觉得情绪是一种负能量。And, and perhaps the person who asked the question does not mean it that way. I don't know. 那或许就是问这个问题的这位朋友，你的原意不是这样子的，我也不知道啊。But that is a common understanding. Of 但是，嗯，但是即使这个不是你的原意，呃呃，就是其实很多人也会有这样的假设的，他觉得情绪都是负面的。Uh, I prefer to use the dimension of destructive and constructive. 就是与其说负向和正向呢，我比较喜欢说呃毁灭性的，还有建设性的。Emotion is a part of the basic information system that human beings have to understand reality. 情绪是我们人理解呃理解现实的其中一个很重要的信息系统的一部分。In bioenergetic analysis, 
the development of emotional intelligence is interrupted or interfered with. 那在身体能量分析里面,我们相信我们每个人情商的发展都是受到一些阻碍的。So, for example, when we work with breathing, 就比如说,当我们去跟呼吸工作的时候,The purpose of working with breathing is not to achieve some specific type of breathing. 那我们去练习呼吸或者是跟呼吸工作并不是为了说可以达到某一种理想的呼吸状态,不是这样子的。It is generally speaking for two purposes. 而是我们有两个不同的目标。One is to increase the energy available to the organism. 一个呢是提升我们人这个生物体,我们身体有的能量。Breathing will often begin the process of dissolving a defense. 而且第二呢,就是呼吸是可以帮助我们融化掉一些防御。And there will be more energy for experience and expression. 所以当你的这些防御被融化掉之后,你就会有更多的精力,更多的能量去表达你真正需要表达的情绪了。and then the feelings that will come, will emerge, will come out, will be whatever feelings have to come out at that moment. Those feelings may be destructive. 而很多这种情绪呢, but in the way I was just talking about myself, those destructive feelings may be necessary. So the question is how to use those feelings constructively. So the the same is true of feelings that most people think of as positive. 其实, uh, For example, love. 比如说爱, most people think of love as a positive energy. So do I. But what happens to a child? Who is loved but not respected? 但是当一个孩子接受到很多的爱, 但是没有接受到很多的尊重的时候, Love and respect are two different emotional energies. 爱和尊重是两种很不一样的情感能量. They each have very different effects on a person's body. 而他们对于人体的这个影响也是很不一样的。Love softens a, a child's body and expands it. 爱呢,会让一个孩子身体变得更柔软,会让他的身体变得更舒展。Respect supports a child's uprightness and inspiration, breathing in and expanding her chest. 而, uh, 而那个尊重呢, 是可以让这个孩子, 就是站得更直, 他整个人会更挺拔, 并且从他的胸腔里面, 他可以呼吸得更深, 更能够去吸气, These are very different functions. 这些都是很不一样的身体功能. So can love be used destructively? 所以爱可以, 呃, 就是, 所以人可以用一个摧毁性的方式去使用爱吗? The answer, in my answer is yes, certainly. 我的答案是绝对可以的. How to become constructive? 那我们怎么可以有建设性的去用爱呢? That is a challenge in living for all of us. 这个对我们每一个人来说都是一个很有挑战的问题。How to know and respect our own destructiveness, how to understand it. 
is very necessary. 怎么可以了解并且去尊重我们自己的一些可能带有摧毁性的倾向呢？我觉得这种了解是很重要的。How to live a constructive life is a challenge that goes beyond psychotherapy. 那如何可以用一个有建设性的方式去生活？这个是一个可能是甚至是超越心理治疗领域的一个问题。Third question is, um, every, every, every therapist have their own personality, and I'm guessing here it, uh, it, it means it means the character, character structure. Every、mm -hmm. therapist has his own character. So how、mm -hmm. do we use our own、uh, advantages and to avoid our disadvantages within these character structures?、Mm -hmm. Very good question. 这是很好的问题问题啊！第三个，第三第三个问题是哦 ，Rebecca asked me to repeat the question in Chinese。第三个问题是，每一个治疗师都有自己的人格特征，那怎么可以利用自己的优势去规避自己的弱势呢 ？The first thing to say about this very necessary question for therapists. 那我想说的第一点呢，就是啊， uh, 这个问题对每一个治疗师来说都是至关重要的。Is that the work of this question is never done？ 啊、uh, ，那那啊， uh, 我想说的就是，在这个问题上呢，就在我们自己人格特征的这个问题上，我们是没有毕业的一天的。Every day, in every encounter with my patients, this question arises. 每一天，当我每一次跟案主去晤谈的时候，去会面的时候，这个问题都会出现。And actually, every day in every relationship I have, these questions arise. 而且其实呢，也不只是在治疗啊，在我平常的生活里面，在每一段的关系里面，我都会有这样的问题。But my reaction is very different when I am a therapist. 但是当我是治疗师的时候呢，我对这个问题的回应是很不一样的，就我对他的反应是很不一样的。What What makes the difference between my role and my posture as a therapist than as a person in everyday life? 那为什么在不同的角色里面，我的反应会那么不一样呢？就为什么我在做治疗师的时候？呃、uh, ，我对自己人格特征的表达或者回应，会跟我在日常生活里面那么不一样呢 ？I I can't answer that question in in a short time and in just a few sentences, but I can point in the direction of the answer. 我很难在我们有限的时间里面去呃完整的回答这个问题，但是我我可以给大家先大概指一个方向。Many years ago, a student of mine at a university course for therapists said something that opened a door for me to understand this whole question in a different way. 就几年前呢，当我在大学里面教治疗啊这个学科的时候呢，我有一个学生问了一个问题，让我看到一个崭新的视角，让我对这个问题有一个新的了解。She said, "Psychotherapy was called forth by evolution to solve a problem." Then, she, this lady, this lady student, she told me, she told me that psychotherapy was called forth by evolution to solve a problem. Then, she, this lady student, she told me, she told me that psychotherapy was called forth by evolution to solve a problem. Then, she, this lady student, she told me, she told me that psychotherapy was called forth by evolution to solve a problem. I have been thinking about that statement for years now. 然后关于这个进化的必要性的这个呃这个观点呢，我这几年来我一直都在回想这句话。And I think it is completely correct. 啊，我觉得他是讲的非常对的。Because the psychotherapy relationship is unique. 因为治疗关系是独特的。It is unlike any other relationship that we have. It is not a better version of our patient-patient relationship. It is not a better version of a parent-child relationship. 
它并不是一种理想化的亲子关系。It is not an ideal version of a marital or friendship relationship. 也不是爱情或者友情的一种理想表现。It has a unique function. 治疗关系的功能是独特的。We have invented it, as we have invented certain other methods for treating human problems and suffering. 而这种功能呢，是我们自己发明的，就像我们也发明了很多其他的方式去解决人类的苦难一样的。And this is part of the article that I wrote recently, so I, I cannot go into it in all its complexity. 那这个我在最近写的一篇文章里面，我有详细的去讲了，所以在这里我也不可能把这些很复杂的一次呈现给大家看。But let me mention two aspects of it that address the question raised by this person. 但是我想就是啊，就是抓其中两个部分啊，来强调一下。我觉得这可能会回答到你的问题。Two of the main aspects, main constituents of the psychotherapy environment are as follows. 那呃，我想讲的这两个部分呢，他们就是心理治疗环境啊里面的两两种要素。The first is that in the psychotherapy relationship, the patient is at the center of the process forever. 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 Uh, the one, the one element is that in this relationship, the patient is always at the center of the process forever. It is always at the center of the process. This is not true in any other relationship. 在任何其他的关系里面都不是这样的。In fact, it would be unhealthy in any other relationship. 不然的话，这个关系就非常非常的不健康了。All other relationships are reciprocal. 因为所有就是在日常生活里面的关系都是都是双向性的。In fact, I would go so far as to say that the most important thing in children's lives is that their parents be happy. 我甚至会说，就是对于大部分的孩子来说啊，他们对他们最重要的东西就是他们父母是快乐的。父母的快乐对孩子来说至关重要。So to have a relationship in which the patient has no responsibility. For my happiness, that's a unique relationship. So, when the patient in the therapy relationship can experience that he is completely responsible for my happiness, this makes this relationship very unique. The second element is that I make no judgment of the person. Of the person. 第二个治疗要素呢，就是我对我面前的这个人是没有任何评判的。Because I structure the therapeutic environment in such a way that I cannot be harmed, I do not have to control the patient's behavior. 因为呢，我自己的治疗环境的设置呢，是呃，是可以帮助我确保无论发生什么，我都不会在身体上受到伤害的。所以在这样的前提下呢，我在治疗室里面，我就不觉得，我就不会觉得我需要去控制任何东西或者任何人了。So the answer to the question about advantages and disadvantages. Hold on, I'm going to change my position a little bit because the sun is affecting me here. 嗯，太阳有点晒，我稍微换一换位置啊。Uh, is that I capitalize on my advantages and I protect my patients from the disadvantages by creating an environment that maximizes the advantages and minimizes the disadvantages. 所以，对于就是这位朋友的
呃人格特征的优势和弱势的这个问题啊，我的简短的答案就是，一方面我会去呃放大我自己的优势。然后另外一方面呢，我会保护案主，让他不要受到我弱势的一些影响。那我怎么去保护呢？就是我首先会给自己创造一个呃非常安全的环境，这样我在这段关系里面就可以避免呈现我的这些弱势了。Within that very specialized relationship that I have with my patients， 那在这个独特的跟案主的关系里面。Each individual relationship is unique. 每一个个人就每一个个体案主的跟我的关系是不一样的，都是独特的。No other relationship like it exists. 在呃治疗室外面是没有类似的关系的。My patient and I together create a unique relationship between her or him and me. 我的案主和我之间，就是我们每一个人之间都会建立这种独特的关系。Within that relationship, I am responsible constantly to observe myself. 所以在这段关系里面，我是一直都必须要呃为自己的内在体验负责。我是一直需要去观察自己。And I am responsible to take. What the patient tells me about myself, in a serious way, to understand if my advantages are negatively affecting her or him. 然后呃，除了我要去为自己的内在觉察负责以外呢，我还必须要对我的案主负责。那这也就意味着每一次我案主给我一些关于我的反馈的时候，我都是很认真的对待的。这样子，我就可以了解到底我的行为或者我的做法，我讲的话有没有对他有影响，有没有让我的弱势伤害到他。And for that work, I need my own openness. I need my colleagues, and sometimes I need my own therapy. 那如果我需要有这种敞开的话。啊、uh, ，我必须要，就是我必须要，我我自己是可以呃、uh, 接纳的，然后我也需要自己就作为自我成长，然后我必须要去跟我其他的呃呃、uh, uh, 其他的伙伴，就其他的同事、其他的治疗师有一种啊、uh, 同辈的督导，然后我也需要去做自己的督导，自己去找治疗师。